Mm-hmm. Quite delicious. Hello. Welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to discuss stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today's a pleasant Sunday smoke. I am smoking on this pleasant Sunday smoke. Germain's King Charles mixture. Can you see that? Now you can. There's not a glare on the tin. I just got done recording my review of this blend. This will post this week, I promise. I think I mentioned this, I don't know how long ago. I did a box opening, said I was going to be reviewing this blend. There is a long queue of blends. They're on my shelf. I've got tins on my shelf. They're just waiting to be reviewed. I think next up, <laughs> next up after this is Sobrani. So that's another blend made by Germain. So we've done, I think two Esoterica blends made by Germain, and we've done Royal Jersey, Cavendish in Virginia, and then King Charles mixture, and then next will be Sobrani. So that's quite a few Germain made blends. They're all quality tobaccos so far, um, and Germain's King Charles is no different. I don't think I'll be giving any way, anything away too much by telling you that before the review posts, but it will definitely be worth checking out. I should probably post that on Wednesday, perhaps. I also recorded a new episode of the Stefan Things Plays Fallout 4 series. I know it's slowing down a little bit, but I'm still trying to post one a week, so that will post this week as well. I need to shove a pipe cleaner in this baby. There you go. It's a wet day today. Very moist, humid. Got a very good response from the introducing a friend to the pipe smoking hobby video that I posted last week. And I figured I would. I think it's a nice change of pace from the normal content on the channel. And uh, my friend Chance, who featured in the video, already seems to have his own little fan club, according to the comments. So perhaps in the future, maybe he'll guest on a Sunday smoke or something. Maybe we can share a pipe together again and talk to him about how it's going. Is he still into the pipe smoking hobby? Are there different blends that he's explored? Things like that. It's always interesting to see sort of the trajectory that people take when they get into a ho the hobby, um, whether or not they've delved into aromatics or Virginias or Englishes, if they hone in on just a certain blend or a certain category genre of blends and really wring everything they can out of that. Do they skip around all over the place and try all sorts of different sorts of blends? It's interesting to me. So we'll see what happens with him. I'm not going to promise any sort of timetable as to when we'll be speaking to him again, but we definitely will in the future. I want to look through my little book here. I've got some things written down. Mm. Some people mentioned last week, I believe. Was it Saturday? I can't remember, but it was supposedly IPSD, International Pipe Smoking Day. And I got some personal messages and or private messages like, wow, why don't you have an IPSD, IPSD video? Uh, quite frankly, I had no idea it was IPSD. If I had known it was, I still wouldn't have done a video probably. I don't, these arbitrary days, I know they serve a purpose. Um, if people are trying to draw attention to a certain subject, I guess pipe smoking, the ho a hobby of pipe smoking, they serve a purpose. But to me, it just seems like an arbitrary thing. And I celebrate, I celebrate IPSD every day, man. I smoke a pipe every day. I make videos all the time. I have a channel about pipe smoking, so I'm not really too concerned about an arbitrary day that we've decided is going to be International Pipe Smoking Day to post a video saying hello, because I post a video Maybe it was Sunday. I can't remember what day it was, but I posted a video Sunday anyway. We have a Sunday smoke every week. We have tobacco reviews almost every week, usually at least every other week. We're pipe smoking heavy on this channel, so I'm not too worried about IPSD. And then I had a question from a viewer. Um, he needed some help. If there are any Egyptian pipe smokers out there in the audience, and I know there are a few, or at least there used to be, because I got a comment from at least, or well, from one viewer in particular who was talking about I think he bought a Dunhill tin in Egypt and he was talking about how much he enjoyed it. But this particular viewer is living in Egypt. I can't remember if he said Cairo or where he was exactly, but he was asking me if any of my viewers know where you can get blends in tobacco, if there are blends in tobacco, blends in Egypt, if there is a specific tobacconist, if there are websites where they can get some of the more 
um, the popular blends that I review on the channel, like the Dunhill blends, because he said the only thing he could that he's been able to find are just kind of the drugstore blends, like Captain Black and Carter Hall and things like that. So, if anyone lives in Egypt, knows anything about Egypt, <laughs> or about the tobacco industry in Egypt, tobacco stores, websites, what have you, where a where an Egyptian man would be able to get his hands on a tin of Dunhill or something, please leave a comment on this video and uh, just maybe pointing to a link, pointing to whatever. If you do put a link in there, it's gonna be marked as spam, but I'll try to make sure I go through all the comments and unmark it as spam if that's the case. So I would appreciate that, and I'm sure my viewer would appreciate that as well. Have you noticed my snazzy warm-up jacket? Ooh, that's right. It's the old school Seattle Mariners. I didn't even realize I had this. I mean, I know I purchased it at one point and then I put it in my coat rack and I guess I completely forgot about it, which I guess tells you how many coats I have. I don't have a ton of clothes clothes, like my closet isn't massive or anything, but I have lots of outerwear. I like jackets and coats. And I guess I, I, think I must've gotten this several years ago, threw it in the clothes rack or coat rack and then I found it today and I was so pleasantly surprised. If you've ever found, I guess people find a sweater or something in the back of their closet. Like, oh, I forgot about this. I love this. But I hadn't even just forgotten about it. I, it was like I had never purchased it and suddenly it just appeared. So I was quite pleased by this. I like the old school Seattle Mariners logo. I was too young to, I don't even know if I was born when they had this logo going on. I think when I was a little kid, they had the, uh, just the yellow S, I think. Um, which, you know, I, I think this is my favorite, even though I don't have any memories of this logo, but the old yellow trident. I tend to like the more simple designs. The new Mariners logo or the current Mariners logo, eh, it's a little busy and the teal in it really drives me crazy. I'm just not a fan of that. It's like the new Seahawks logo or the current Seahawks logo. I like it, I think it looks cool, but there's that goddamn fluorescent green in it or that neon lime green. Why do that? I find that so irritating. And I guess I would still prefer the old school Seahawks logo. I just, I like things with tradition. Why do things have to be revamped all the time? I find that annoying. That's why, that's the main reason that hipsters drink PBR is because of the can. It's not because of the taste, obviously. I mean, it's innocuous, but it's just like slightly flavored water, but it's not a delicious tasting beer. It's because it looks like, you like holding it in your hand. It's old school. People enjoy that. Let's not jazz everything up all the time. Coke found that out, didn't they? Didn't they do like a new can at some point? I don't know. I'm talking out of my ass right now. But as far as I know, the Coke cans, I never drink Coke, but they look the way they used to, right? Who knows? Anyway, I was pleased to find this jacket. I think it's pretty cool. It's funny that I don't really follow baseball at all, but if I'm wearing something with a baseball logo on it, it would have to be the Mariners because I live in the Pacific Northwest. So then if you're wearing this around, living in the Pacific Northwest, people will be, obviously this baseball season is going on right now, but if it were in the middle of baseball season I was wearing, and I'm wearing this, people would come up to me and say, oh Jesus, those Mariners, huh? Because usually they suck. And then I, they would expect me to know something about what was going on that season because I was wearing a Mariners jacket or a hat. I have a Mariner's hat too with the old school trident on it. So I feel slightly ashamed, I guess, to wear it because I don't really have any stake in it. I don't care about baseball at all. Um, it's fine with the Seahawks if I wear Seahawks gear because I, I know what's going on with the Seahawks. I follow them during the football season, but I think it's fine. If you live in a region, even if you don't follow the sport, you are allowed to wear the team logo of that regional team. I've just decided that right now but I'm right. And especially this, because this is no longer the logo for the team. So I guess it's more just a fashion statement. I don't know. I think last week when I was having my outdoor cigar smoke, smoking that Padron 2000 Natural cigar out of the park, I told you, or I was about to tell you a story about a very interesting homeless man, but then decided I didn't have time so I'll tell it this week. Um, let me preface this story by giving you a little background information. I think I've mentioned things like this in the past, but I am someone who, I don't like loud people. 
I don't like people who try to draw attention to themselves. If someone is trying to get attention, I will very, very stubbornly refuse to give them the attention they're seeking. So if someone is like, well, being loud and obnoxious, I will not pay any attention to them at all. I will just zone them out because I don't want to feed into their obnoxiousness by giving them the validation of me paying attention to them. That's just my personality. I don't like that. And it's the same with people who are acting very strange. If they're not, let's use the term normal, even though that'll probably offend people. If they're not normal, but they're just doing something weird, I will ignore them completely as well, just because, and it's not, in that instance, it's not because I don't want to validate them. It's because I guess in some ways it's a politeness because obviously they're mentally unhinged in a certain way. And I don't want to be, I don't want to seem as though I am uh, like looking at a car accident or something, you know, just staring at the crazy person doing crazy things. And when I lived in Los Angeles, I had a lot of experience or practice ignoring crazy behavior because I took the subway every day. A lot of people, I don't think even knew there was a subway in Los Angeles, but there was a subway and it was filled with crazy people and they would do ridiculous things on the subway. And I became a master at ignoring the insanity that was happening two feet away from me. So that's the, the background for this story. Now, come to the present day or a couple weeks ago, I was in my favorite bagel restaurant. Is it a bagel restaurant? I guess a cafe. Um, eating my bagel as I want to do every weekend. I get coffee, I get a bagel sandwich, I do a little reading, and uh, I enjoy myself every weekend. And I like to sit by the window, I have my own seat, my little area that I like to sit in. And I noticed outside in front of the store, there was a homeless man who I'd seen around town before, obviously. And he's one of those guys who he can make you a little uneasy because he just seems so unpredictable. A lot of the homeless people who wander around, you know, they seem very mild mannered, very downtrodden. Like they're not going to try anything because they're just kind of shuffling around doing what they do. But then occasionally you get the really twitchy homeless guys who will suddenly just scream out of nowhere. They'll, they'll be walking behind you and right as you pass, they'll go, ah! and just like freak out and scream. So they always have you a little on edge. You don't know what they're going to do. This is one of those kind of guys, this homeless dude. And he was out front of the bagel place and he had some sort of mass of rags or something of like, I don't know, like trash bags and strips of cloth or something that he had sort of formed into a ball. And he was doing this exaggerated like wind up, like up and then pitching the ball as fast as he could to a, a, a newspaper machine and just smack, smack it into the newspaper machine, like shaking the whole thing. It was really loud. He was violently flailing around as he was throwing this thing. And there are all these people, all the normals walking by in front of the restaurant and his, his gyrations and he was just like freaking out and just violently throwing this thing. And people were like freaking out as they were walking by, frightened, I guess, of him. And you could tell that he could tell he was having this effect on people and he was enjoying it. And you could also tell that he was enjoying his little game of, of pitcher, whatever he was doing, pitching this strange misshapen ball thing at the newspaper machine. So he was causing a bit of a, a disturbance out front. And I, you know, noticed this. I was right in the window, so I noticed what he was doing, but I was reading and I very studiously ignored it, pretended I, was, I didn't see it at all. And a lot of the other people in the cafe were like, oh my God, look at this, oh my God, what's gonna happen? They were noticing this dude doing this. And then he got bored with just the pitching game that he was doing. And he started just like, he, he would stop, he'd just kind of stand there with this look on his face. And then he would suddenly just dart in one direction, like towards someone. So people would be walking by on the sidewalk he was kind of under the, the uh, awning for this restaurant. He would stand there and as someone walked by, he would suddenly just dash at them and not hit them or anything, but just run right towards them and then stop himself right before he got to them. And they'd be like, oh, and freak out, obviously. It was like these, you know, very middle-class, middle-aged women and men and stuff walking by, just like, oh my God, oh. People who don't go downtown because it's kind of scary because there's people like that around. And so I noticed this as well. Like, oh God, this guy's really, 
he's really putting it on right now, really pouring it on. And again, you could tell that he was enjoying himself, um, really enjoying harassing the normals as they were walking by. But then I saw his beady little eyes catch a glimpse of me in the window. And again, this is while I'm reading and I just out of the corner of my eye would notice these things, still not acknowledging it at all, just completely ignoring it. And I saw him look at me and I just knew that he was going to try to fuck with me in some way. I could just tell this was going to happen. And so I braced myself, still ignoring, reading the book. He got the wild eyes going. He started darting his head back and forth. And he suddenly just, <laughs> he just threw himself at the giant, you know, picture window in front of the store. I'm, here's the window. I'm here reading a book. He's outside the window. He suddenly just throws himself at the window and slams against it and just starts staring at me. So he's literally, an inch and a half away from me, only separated by this quarter inch of plate glass. The whole window shakes, the whole cafe freaks out, everyone jumps. This woman who was in the, the seat next to me or the table next to me actually like covered her head and screamed ah! and like almost fell to the ground, fell out of her seat. But I, completely expressionless, made not a motion, continued reading my book ignored him completely, did not flinch at all. And I'm very proud of this fact, just continued reading. His beady little eyes right here, his face <laughs> looking in at me, did not look up from my book at all. He eventually got bored and walked away. And it was so funny because it was so obvious to everyone in the cafe that obviously I noticed what had just happened. Unless I were blind and deaf, and if I were blind, how am I reading this book? I had to have noticed that this person did this, but I had no reaction whatsoever. And I could see everyone else, like especially the woman who had almost fallen out of her seat, they're all looking at me. And especially as he was still there and I was just not, not looking at him all, like reading my book and his head is right there on the other side of the glass. And everyone's like, just staring like, what, what, what? what? How can he not, how, how is he not reacting to this? But I was so pleased with myself for not giving him the satisfaction of reacting to his craziness. Now, it's a very small victory, but to me, I consider that a moral victory. It was amusing. And with that tale, I think it's time to end. We will draw this Sunday smoke to a close. Thank you guys all for watching so very much. Thank you for watching the channel. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. Thank you for sharing the channel with friends. I appreciate it very much. But until next time, until we meet again, I've been your good friend Bradley. You have been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things on a Pleasant Sunday Smoke. I'll see you later.